Hello, welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 29th lecture of this course. Today we would be learning the singular value decomposition and its computation. As you know, singular value decomposition, it is called SVD, has many applications especially in image processing, control systems, noise removal and so on and so forth. Let us quickly recall the SVD theorem. Let A is R of M by N, a matrix, then there exists orthogonal matrices U R of M by M and V R of N by N such that we could able to write the coefficient matrix A is equal to U times of sigma V transpose where sigma is an M by N diagonal matrix. The diagonal entries of sigma r all non-negative and can be arranged in non-increasing order. Let us see quickly the proof of this theorem. Denote the eigenvalues of the symmetric positive definite matrix A transpose A which are non-negative lambda 1 is equal to sigma 1 square lambda 2 is equal to sigma 2 square, so on and so forth, lambda n is equal to sigma n square. And the corresponding eigenvectors by v1, v2, v3, vn, let sigma 1 greater than or equal to sigma 2, etc. and sigma of r plus 1 is equal to sigma n and v1 is equal to v1, v2, v3, vr, where v2 is vr plus 1, vr plus 2, vr plus 3 up to vrn. And let v is equal to v1, v2 be the set. Then v is an n by n orthogonal matrix. Also, since v1, v2, vn forms an orthogonal set of eigenvectors of A transpose A, we have Va transpose A transpose Avi will be equivalent to sigma i square and Va transpose A transpose Avj will be equivalent to 0 for every i not equal to j. Define now a set of vectors Ui that is ui is equal to 1 over sigma i times of a v i, i is equal to 1 to r. The ui's i is equal to 1 to r then form an orthonormal set because ui transpose uj will be equivalent to 1 over sigma j times of a v i old transpose. 1 over sigma a v j. So, that will be equivalent to 1 over sigma i sigma j v i transpose a transpose a v j. So, either it will be equal to 0 for i not equal to j and 1 for i is equal to j. Set u 1 is equal to u 1 u 2 u 3 u r and choose u2 is equal to ur plus 1, ur plus 2, um such that uj transpose of a is equal to 0 for j is equal to r plus 1, r plus 2, etc. m. Then the set u1, u2, u3, ur, ur plus 1, ur plus 2, um forms an orthonormal basis of the m space of cm. Now set u is equal to u1, u2. Then u and v are orthonormal and using equation 1, 
we obtain this form that is u transpose a v will be equal to u1 transpose u2 transpose u m transpose multiplied with a of v1 v2 v n so that will be written as this matrix 1 over sigma 1 times of v1 transpose a transpose 1 by sigma 2 times of v2 transpose a transpose like that you will have multiplied with a of v1 v2 vn so therefore ultimately this matrix can be written as 1 over sigma 1 times of sigma 1 square and rest are all zeros in that particular row 0 1 by sigma 2 times of sigma 2 whole square like that so these are all zeros so essentially the matrix is a sparse. Now the relation between the singular values and the eigenvalues. The above proof of the singular value decomposition theorem reveals the following interesting relationship between the singular values and the singular vectors of A with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A transpose A. The singular values of A are non-negative square roots of the eigenvalues of A transpose A. The right singular vectors are the eigenvectors of A transpose A. Furthermore, the singular value decomposition of A is related to the eigen decomposition of A transpose A as V transpose a transpose A V will be equal to the sigma of transpose times of sigma. So therefore, one could see that how actually the singular value decomposition can be written by using the following theorem. The non-zero singular values of an M by N matrix assuming that M is greater than or equal to N matrix A R positive eigenvalues of the matrix. So, this matrix will take into this form. C is equal to 0 mm and A, A and 0 nn. So, we can write this A as u times of sigma v transpose be the singular value decomposition of the matrix A. Partition the matrix u that is u1 m by n u2 m by m minus n and sigma will be of this form summation 1 n by n and 0 m minus n upon n. Let us define a matrix P that is u1 hat minus u1 hat u2 v hat and v hat and 0 will be order of n over m by n s n where u1 is will really equal to 1 by square root of u1 and v is equal to 1 by square root of root 2 of v. Then it is easy to see that the matrix P transpose Cp that will be sigma 1 0 0 0 minus sigma 1 0 and 0 0 sigma. So, this is sigma is nothing but a matrix of 1 which shows that the non-zero eigenvalues of C are sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma k etc. where sigma 1 through sigma k are the non-zero singular values. Computing the pseudo inverse with singular value decomposition. Previously we have seen that when A is M by N that is M greater than N matrix having full rank the pseudo inverse of A is given by A transpose A whole inverse times of A transpose. A formal definition of the pseudo inverse of any matrix A whether it has full rank or not can be given as follows. The pseudo inverse is also known as the Moray Penrose inverse and it is the standard terminology which is being used. There are different properties of the pseudo inverse 
the pseudo inverse of an n by n matrix A is an n by n matrix X satisfies the following properties. So matrix A is A by A and X A X is X, A X transpose is A X, A X transpose is X A. The pseudo inverse of a matrix always exists and is unique. We now show that the pseudo inverse provides a nice expression for the pseudo inverse expression. Let A is equal to U times of sigma V transpose be the singular value decomposition of A, then it is easy to verify that the matrix that is A plus is V times of sigma U transpose, where sigma is nothing but diagonal of 1 over sigma J. If sigma j is equal to 0, then we use this 1 over sigma j is 0. It satisfies all the properties of the above and therefore is the pseudo inverse of A. Note that this expression for the pseudo inverse coincides with A inverse where A is non-singular matrix. A inverse is A transpose A whole inverse times of A transpose this can be written as V into sigma transpose U transpose, U into sigma V transpose whole inverse multiplied with V times of sigma transpose U transpose. And this is V times of sigma inverse, sigma transpose whole inverse multiplied with V transpose V and sigma transpose U transpose. So this turns out to be V times of sigma inverse U transpose. Note that in this case sigma plus is sigma minus 1. The process for computing the inverse of A plus of A using SVD can be summarized as follows. So the algorithm is computing the pseudo inverse using the SVD. An input is an M by N matrix A. Output is the pseudo inverse of the matrix A. And step 1 is find the singular value decomposition of A. So A is equal to U times of sigma V transpose. And step 2 is compute this matrix. That is sigma plus is diagonal of 1 over sigma 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 by sigma 2, 0, 0, etc. So like this last one will be zeros. Where sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma R are the non-zero singular values of the matrix A. And step 3 is compute A plus is V times of sigma U transpose. So we can see some example based on this assumption. Let us say you want to find out the pseudo inverse of a matrix A. So this is the matrix given to me. Now by using this algorithm I will multiply with 1 0 0 right 0 to 0, 0, 0, 0 and this is A is 1 over 3 minus 6 by 3, 6 by 9 minus 6 by 9. This is the matrix. So the matrix A is equal to U times of sigma V transpose. So A plus is nothing but A plus is nothing but V times of sigma plus U transpose where sigma plus is this matrix and U transpose is this matrix. So ultimately V transpose is V. So what you get is you need to write this matrix A as in the form of U transpose is equal to 0 minus 1 0 0 0 minus 1. So thus the pseudo inverse A plus will be equivalent to 1 by 3 minus 6 by 9 minus 6 by 9 minus 6 by 9 1 by 3 minus 6 by 9 minus 6 by 9, minus 6 by 9, 1 by 3 and this is the matrix you do get it. And how do you get the computing the singular value decomposition? Since the singular values of a matrix A are just the non-negative square roots of the eigenvalues of the symmetric matrix A transpose A, it is natural to think of computing the singular values of matrix A by finding the eigenvalues of the symmetric matrix. A transpose A. However, 
this is not a numerically effective process because as we have seen in previous lecture some vital information may be lost due to round off error in the process of computing a transpose a. The following simple example illustrates the phenomena. So, you have a this matrix a is equal to 1 1.0001, 1.0000, 1.000, 1.0001. 1 the singular values of a are 2.0010 and 0 0.0001. Now, you can write this matrix as A transpose A that will be 2.0002, 2.002, 2.002, 2.002. So, it is up to 4 significant digits 1, 2, 3, 4 significant digits. The eigenvalues of A transpose A are 0, 4.0004. Thus, the singular values of A will be computed as 0, 2.001 in 4 digit arithmetic whereas the actual singular values are like this 0 0.001 and 2.0010. Finding the singular value decomposition of the bidiagonal matrix. The process is of the QR iteration starting from the n by n bidiagonal matrix B it is successively constructs a sequence of bidiagonal matrices BK such that each bi has possibly smaller of diagonal entries than the previous one. The ith iteration is equivalent to applying the implicit symmetric QR algorithm described previously with the Wilkinson shift to the symmetric diagonal matrix bi time transpose times of bi without of course forming the product that is B i transpose times of B i explicitly. The effective triadical matrices are assumed to be takes into the, this form that is unreduced form. Note that the implicit symmetric QR works with unreduced matrices otherwise we would work with decoupled SVD problems. In the following just one iteration steps of the method is described. To simplify this notation, we will have this matrix B is equal to alpha 1, beta 2, etc., 0, alpha 2, etc. So, the matrix B is again a sparse matrix. Wilkinson shift that is sigma, the eigenvalues of lambda of the 2 by 2 right handed corner of matrix B transpose B will take into this form. That is alpha square n minus 1 plus beta square n minus 1, alpha n minus 1 beta n and beta n alpha n minus 1 alpha n square beta n square which is close to alpha n square plus beta n square. And step 1 is form the given rotation j1 such that j1 times of alpha 1 square minus sigma comma alpha 1 multiplied with beta 2 0 0 etc transpose. So, this will be mapped to what you call the non-zero value under star zeros. This is done in two steps that is compute a given rotation j1 prime such that this will happen. So, that is j1 prime is nothing but sigma alpha 1 square minus sigma and alpha 1 beta 1 this will be equivalent to the non-zero value and it is a zero value. Form this j1 which is j1 prime 0 0 i n minus 2. Apply j1 to the right of b and overwrite b1 b j1 with b. So, you take into this form b is equal to b j1. So, this is non zero, this is non zero, non zero, non zero, non zero, non zero. Where plus indicates a fill in, this will be in set of 2 i 1 position. So, that is second row, first element. The idea is now to choose the non-zero entry plus down the subdiagonal to end of the tile matrix by applying the given rotation in an appropriate order as indicated below. Form the given rotation J2 such that the fill in the at the 2 by 1 position is eliminated. So, look at this, this is the 3 by 1 that is first 1 by 3 position. So, these are all non-zeros and these are all zeros. 
that is fill in at the 1 3 position. In the step 4, form the given rotation J3 to eliminate fill in the form 1 3 position. So, you will have that is B is equal to BJ3 that is uh, non zero, non zero, non zero, non zero, and this is the position what is the third 3 2 position as I spoke over here. So, in the step 5, form J4 to eliminate fill in the 3 by 2 position. So, you get 3 by 2 position. So, it has gone to what is called 2 by 4 position. The process is continued. The general process is now clear. The entries 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, etc. are that is eliminated by a pre multiplication, whereas the entry 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, etc. are eliminated by a post multiplication. So, at the end of one iteration, we will have a new biodiagonal matrix called B orthogonally equivalent to the original biodiagonal matrix B. So, you will have a matrix of this form B bar is J2n minus 2, etc., J4, J2, B is equal to J1, J3, etc., 2n minus 1. Now, let us consider, take this example 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3, and 0, 0, 1. The Wilkinson shift is sigma 1 is equal to 15.088, and J1 will be like this. So, these two values are the main diagonal, sub diagonal, super diagonal. So, in the step 2, Bj1 is equal to will be evaluated in the like this. So, this is 0, this is 0, these are all non zeros. Fill in the 2 1 position, that is 2 1 position, if you look at, this will be changed over here. These are all zeros in the step 3 process. Similarly, B is equal to J2 BJ1. So, it turns out to be like this. This is the matrix which we get it. The fill in 1 3 position. And ultimately, you form J3 is equal to in this form. So, these are all 2 0, 3 0. So, 4 0 entries and 5 are non zero entries. So, B is equal to J2 times of B into J1 J3. So, you get into this form of the matrix. The fill in the last 3 2 position is we form this matrix called J4 that is 1 0 0 0 0.9926 minus of 0 0.1210 0 0.1210 0 0.9926. 0 0 Stopping criteria what is this for this iteration? The algorithm typically requires a few iterations before the off diagonal entry Bn becomes negligible. A criterion for off diagonal negligible follows. For neglecting the exceptions of a diagonal matrix 0, if this happens, that is mod of beta i is less than or equal to epsilon times of mod of alpha i plus mod of alpha i minus 1. Accept a diagonal entry alpha i to be 0 if this is happens to 0, that is the absolute value of alpha i is less than or equal to sigma times of norm of b, where epsilon is a small multiplication of the machine precision mu. So, flop count. The above process is iterative and quite cheap. The estimated flop count is 4m square n plus 8m times of n square plus 9n square that is for m greater than or equal to n. This count includes the cost of that is u, sigma and v. Then let us look at into the another SVD algorithm that is what is called Gulam Kahan Rinch algorithm. It is a processor can be made more faster. Sometimes if a matrix A is tried angularized best, first by QR factorization and then the procedure is applied to the upper triangular matrix R, the idea was mentioned in Lawson's and Hansons in their celebrated 1974 book by the method of solving the least square problems and later fully analyzed by Chan, the triangular SVD to be called as Chan singular value decomposition and can be addressed as follows. Find the factorization of A and uh, the Q transpose A will be equivalent to R comma 0. And in the step 2, find the singular value decomposition of R using Gulam Kahan range algorithm. So, you do get a matrix like this R is equal to x times of sigma y transpose. And step 3, compute the singular values and singular vectors of the matrix A. The singular values of A are just the singular values of R 
the singular matrices u and v are given by like this u is equal to q times of diagonal of x l of m minus n v that is equal to u and the flop count will be the triangular SVD requires about 4 m square n plus 22 n cube flops to compute sigma u v compared to the 4 m square n plus 8 m n square plus 9 n cube flops required for the gulab kahan reams algorithm. Clearly, there will be savings with the triangular SVD when m greater than or equal to 5 n by 3. Note that in this case, one needs to be bi-diagonalizable an upper triangular matrix rather than a fully matrix. We can demonstrate by using this simple example of that is, uh, you know, the there are three rows and two columns, three by two. The QR factorization of this matrix turns out to be like this. So this I will leave it in exercise and you do get the matrix R, the way which we did it in the previously. So A is equal to Q into R matrix. So these are the two matrices which I do get over here. And then the step two what I do is the singular value decomposition of R. So R is equal to X times of sigma Y transpose and X will be of this form and Y will be of this form, sigma will be of this form. The singular value decomposition of A is equal to U times of mu sigma V transpose the singular values of A are all, these are the two singular values, 7.6656, 0 0.4881 and U will be taken into this form, the matrix. So if you look at the flop count for the least squares problem using the SVD and other methods, in view of two SVD algorithms just described, let us have an, another close look at the flop count of different approaches for the system AX is equal to B, assuming that M is greater than or equal to N. Using the gulab kahan reams algorithm, you do get this matrix for a matrix of M or N. And for the Chan SVD, you do get like this. For normal equations, you get like this. Householder method, you get like this. Using modified Gram's method, you get like this, where M and N are number of rows and columns. So, in order to make it the SVD more friendly, we will generalize this SVD. The singular value decomposition method can be generalized for a pair of matrices A and B. And this generalized SVD is useful in certain applications such as constrained least square problems. So this will be supported by a theorem that is let A and B be respectively the real matrices of order M by N and P by N, M greater than N. Then there exists the orthogonal matrix U that is, and V such that you will have this equality. U transpose A W is equal to C that is equal to diagonal of C1, C2, C3, Cn, etc. And B transpose B W is equal to diagonal matrix D of D1, D2, D3, DQ for every D greater than 0. Where Q is equal to minimum of P comma N and D1 greater than 0, D2, etc. Rank the elements C1 by D1, C2 by D2, etc. are called generally singular values of the matrix B. So after having had this theory and uh, so many examples, we will try to do some more examples of singular value decomposition in the next class. So thank you very much for staying back with this course, numerical linear algebra and applications. Thank you once again.